Hi, this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. Today, I'd like to do a review of the Colonel sold by Camp Craft Outdoors. This knife is made by Rocky Woodland Forge for, uh, for Jason. It's Jason's own design. This knife is just over 11 inches long and the blade looks like it's about six and a half, six and a quarter. So this is a large belt knife. This is my opinion, this is a large belt knife. Now a knife this size is more of a survival knife than a true bushcraft knife. Um, I actually filmed this video out of order. So the first thing I did, you're gonna see later, is I just beat the snot out of it. I attempted to break it. Then I put it back on the stones, brought it back out in the woods. And today we're just gonna do a nice normal bushcraft uh, knife type, uh, knife review. So, like I said before, this knife originally was designed as a 3 16 inch steel width. Uh, this is an eight inch version. So you still have all the strength of the knife, the handling of the knife, however the knife's quite a bit lighter. It's quite a wide blade on it. It's almost a full two inches wide from top to bottom. And what that actually was designed for is you can grip the knife to do any scraping or it lets you choke up on the blade to make a shorter knife. It also, with the, the two inch wide steel, uh, it's quite a bit heavier than a, a knife that would be only an inch wide or whatever. That gives you a little more uh, weight. So if you were doing any chopping, uh, you definitely have a little more momentum with it. So we're out here today continuing our test of the kernel from Camp Craft Outdoors. I've put it through its paces in a woodland setting. I'm trying to think of uh, different ways to test this knife out. Uh, I got a locked door here. I'm going to try to beat it down into the jam through the lock. Knife's coming through it just fine. The door's not doing so well. Okay, so I found the combination of this door. The combination was kernel and stick. No worse for wear. Before we even start this, I'll uh, 
<laughs> I'll throw it out there. I have no idea why this would be a good idea. Uh, if the house was on fire, you had to come out the side, this knife would get you through. I mean, this isn't, uh, this is not vinyl siding here. So I can see inside here, this is old school lath board in here. Again, we're not talking about just cutting through a piece of drywall. So this is getting us an access point and firewood. So this thing shows it can take a beating. Let's see what the wallpaper looks like.
Okay, this is a 1 8 inch steel survival knife. I mean, you saw me pry it on this thing. This is an old school house, uh, old siding, sheeting, lath board. This has got it all, and I went right through it like it was nothing. Granted, it wore me out to get this little hole, but uh, as far as the knife is concerned, it'll take more. To answer the original question, there's actually wood paneling in here, not uh, not wallpaper. So that was an extra layer that we had to go through. When I was batoning through it, it just pushed it right off, so it ripped through the nails. I'm impressed with this as far as an urban setting. Uh, if you want to try it yourself, go chop a hole in your own house and send me pictures. Right on the edge. Okay, I'm gonna go down, nice and easy. And if it falls off, it's okay. Cause we'll just burn it. Okay. There. Now stop at that cut each time. Okay. See? See how it all just stacks in. Mm -hmm. And if you cut it off, it's no big deal. You can kneel down if you need to. There you go. Good job. Yeah, use the whole blade to slice like that. Look closer to your handle, you usually have better control. Oh, that's a good feather stick. Nice job. So I think I'm going to turn this into a little bit of a tri-stick. First thing I'm going to do, this is just the broke off end. An axe actually did that. Uh, I'm going to square this off um, and make a, a camfered edge. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so can you just imagine if this was going to be a tent stake. Now I have a flat end to hit. Drive that into the ground. And the edges are angled off at a 45 degree angle. That way they don't split off. Next I'm going to do a stake notch.
And to do that, I'm rocking the knife into the wood. I'm gonna go about a third of the way through. Then I'm coming up at an angle. To meet that cut. How's that coffee doing, Ethan? Good. Not boiling yet? Start to on the top. Yeah, cool. Keep the, uh, keep the fire stoked up. We'll get that bacon on in a minute. Okay. So you can see, you know, again, this would be the top of a stake that you would hammer into the ground. This would be your notch where you could slide your guideline off a tarp or a tent or whatever structure you're making. Uh, this is also usable for quite a few number of traps. But that gives a good purchase for the uh, for the line that you're using. I'm gonna come down about an inch, maybe two inches. I'm gonna rock the knife in. And I just created an X on the wood, right here. And you saw I just kind of made a plunge cut and I rocked a knife. A heavy knife is a lot easier to do this. And the fact that this is the 1 8 inch kernel, uh, it's a lot easier to push through this wood than the larger 3 16th knife. Now I'm going to come from the long side of the stick and cut away everything but the top X. You see I kind of switched up grips as needed, so I'm holding on to the back of the spine. I just made this a shorter knife for this particular cut. And I cut to my line, and I make more plunge cuts. You see the technique I'm using now, I'm using the tip of the knife and I'm actually making the pressure with my thumb on my off hand. There we go.
is an impromptu pro, uh, pot hook right here. You see, it's kind of got a, a bird's beak kind of concept to it. And I can use that to check on the pot. So you can see the purpose of this. Very handy notch. Kind of impressive and it's easy to do. So I like it a lot. Okay, I'm going to come down a couple inches. I'm just going to use the, the width of the blade to gauge that at two inches. I'm going to make a cross cut. Rocking the knife in. I'm going to come down about an inch. Make it about two inches. I'm going to make another cross cut. So let's see. Here and here. Okay, now I'm going to come in at an angle. Cut to that stop cut and then rock it off the curls. side, do the same thing. There we go. Now the coffee's cooking. Boiling. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. So you got to count 60 seconds. Count 60. Let me know when you get to 60, buddy, and that coffee will be ready. With a heavy blade like this, it's easy for it to push past a stop cut. Right. 60 seconds? Yep. Okay. Now, I am better equipped to do a wintertime knife review. So what I'm making here, this is a, a log cabin notch. And in this cut right here, difficulty with the uh, width of the blade so you can do it but it's definitely easier in this situation with a slightly smaller blade
So that's a fair log cabin hutch. Uh, these angles, these actually should be a little more closer to straight down. I can rectify that. But you would use this type of notch for a, you know, crafting and building things in the woods. And it's going to have another notch similar to it that it interlocks to. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So, camphered top, seven notch, or stake notch, pot hook, square notch. So, coffee in a wintertime knife review is definitely a bonus, but when we got bacon, we're really smoothing it now. So, we got our kind of sort of spatula, which works good enough for this application. I'm going to keep going on this. I'm going to make a V-notch now. So in this case I am choking up on the knife significantly and I'm going to tuck this under my arm. And my only pressure is going to be coming from these fingers. We'll put more in the skillet next time. Yeah. Looking good? Yep. Yeah, see these these coals are what you want to cook with. Because they'll stay pretty consistent temperature wise. Why wouldn't you want changing temperature? Well then you gotta keep adjusting the height of the pan. Oh. You know, because you get it too hot and it's burning it. And then too cold and you're not cooking it. Okay, there is a V-notch. And you would use that for joining... Let's see here. You know, if you were lashing two pieces of round stock in the woods. See how that kind of just sets in there and helps you lash it in. Now I was going to make a, a campered point on, or um, a, a short tapered point on this, like a stake, but I need a spatula more than I need a stake right now, so we're going to call this good. So everybody always talks about fine carving stuff, and you know this isn't the best knife, and this isn't the best tri stick you'll ever going to see, but you know it didn't take me long, and it's completely doable with a knife that definitely pushes the survival knife realm over the bushcraft knife realm but it's able to do dual duty. So my final thoughts on the Colonel from Campcraft Outdoors. I think this is a great knife. This is designed as a one tool option. Uh, this knife usually uh, rides around with me. I work in an urban environment. So, you know, you saw beating on the side of a house and stuff. This is going to encounter uh, non-organic objects fairly well. You know, if I have to push it through a door lock, uh, I smash glass with it. You know, I batoned it through the side of a house. I pierced uh, metal. You know, I punched through that can like it was nothing. A very, very intimidating knife. That's another thing I like about it. Large knife, wide knife. I like the, uh, the scale that was left on it when it was hand forged. 
So, you know, if I was in a situation where, you know, the knife had to be used as a weapon, great option, great option with this. You can see it's got an undercut right here, so my hand's not going to slide up the knife if I was to, to stab with this knife. Also, because it's a two inch wide blade, you know, if I give this thing a little, uh, it's called a comma cut, so if I stab and then make a little comma slash on the bottom, I mean, I'm opening up a two inch wide gap. Use the big spatula there, buddy, if you need help. I'll what? be right, I said use the bigger spatula to keep that bacon turning. But this is what I do. I like to go out and head in the woods. So if a knife is not going to um, work in the woods for me, then I really don't need it. So I can stretch this knife, do all the normal bush craft task. Uh, it batons great. It carves well. It's handy to have on your belt as a solid one tool option. I didn't cover the sheath at all. Uh, comes with a handmade leather sheath. The retention on this is actually very, very well. This, uh, it's ridiculously wet molded. I actually fell out of a canoe while I was wearing this knife. Uh, so it kind of re-wet molded itself as, as it dried. But, you know, great tension. Um, high quality sheath. So this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. Thanks for watching.